You better use that right to remain silent. Anything you say can or might get you killed. Hey, what's up, my peoples? I'm Go here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the G Creation Rebel. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So right up front here, we have Rebel looking all like, hey. I'm a rebel. His name is Rebel. On this side we have Rebel. On the other side we have Rebel. On the top we have Rebel. On the bottom we have Rebel. On the back of the box we have your obligatory product shots, which I absolutely love, because we have the robot form, and then we have armored car, and then we have actions. More actions! I don't know. Warning! Don't eat anything in this box. That can be very bad for you. And that's basically it for the packaging. Also included is the collector's card with Rebel all like, hey, I'm a rebel. And his name is Rebel. And on the back, you have text specs if that interests you. And a bio in extremely small type. If you can read that, God bless your eyesight. Hooray for cards. So moving right along, here we have G Creations Rebel, and this is their take on IDW Prowl. And Rebel is a very appropriate name for a Prowl, especially if you if you've been reading the comic books. Yeah, he's he's a rebel, all right. <laughs> he's a rebel. He's a rebel, and he'll never ever be any good. He's a rebel because he never ever does what he should. Um, but yeah. Um, it's a pretty cool toy. Um, it does have its its issues, but um, oh no, it's a decent figure. So here he is in his armored car mode, his armored car of police, murder, death, justice. Um, very cool looking though. I do quite like it. So let's get in close here so we can take a look at the details. Yeah, some little spots of blue right up front, some red, that little police insignia right there, tampographed. On the one side, you got that tempograph on the other. Uh, the cockpit, you can see it's done in a nice silver, actually more of a gunmetal gray. But looks quite nice nonetheless. And it's the typical, you know, white and blue paint scheme of a police vehicle with some white, with some red. You got the little light bar right up top that's done with a nice metallic red paint, which is a little bit on the sloppy side there. And those, see those lines aren't as crisp as one would like, but it's okay, not the end of the world. And you got the wheels there. Uh, the, the wheels are rubber. So you have rubber tires, which is very nice. And you can see the weird kind of funky design there for the rims, but that is accurate. That's, that's accurate to his, his, uh, his comic book design. Even though it is weird. Hey, it's Mickey Mouse. I don't know. <laughs> he has Mickey Mouse in his tires. I don't know why. But anyway. And you have the back tail lights here. Done in the blue and red. These exhaust pipes back here are on a hinge. You can kind of angle those up or just leave them down if you want to. Totally up to you. Now you want to have that oriented. And if we take a look at the underside here, you can pretty much see how the robot's going to work out. He does have that visible head syndrome. You're under arrest. Anyway. It does roll, as rolling things should. Hooray for rolling. It does roll nice and smooth. So, there you have that. And for comparison, here he is with the Generation Toy version of IDW Optimus Prime. So you can see how they scale with one another. And here he is with G Creations IDW Optimus Prime. Make me transform this thing again! Anyway. You can see how they scale with one another. So, there you have that. Now, as far as accessories go, this figure does include some weaponry. He does include his uh, his shoulder launchers right here, which are just done in an off-white plastic there. So you get two of those. You can store these on the vehicle mode. You just have slots right there, and you just take them and just plug them in like so and just plug it in plug it in there you go those are on a hinge you can angle those however you want so you have those stored right there you do also get two guns and they are two different designs which i do quite like you can see some pretty nice molding going on there you have have a dark yellow paint on there as well the guns are okay the guns are not great but they i mean they look okay 
And these can also store on the vehicle mount. You can see you have uh, slots on either side of the guns. And you have these tabs right here on the back of the vehicle. And you just take the guns and just get everything lined up. And just push them on. And, oops, sometimes they don't like to hold. Stay. There you go. Thank you. They don't hold on super securely, unfortunately, but they hold on well enough. So, there you have those stored on the vehicle mode as well. And the last accessories that are included with this figure are the, uh, the two beating sticks right here. <laughs> or they could be drumsticks, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. You can say there's no paint on them whatsoever. Very simple in their design. These guys two beating sticks. Um, the instructions don't say anything about storage in vehicle mode for these, but I have found a way that you can store them. Uh, if you go underneath the car here, of course I'm gonna knock these off because they don't hold on too well. Those are gonna fall off too. Okay, you stay there. You, you know what, just, just do what you want. Just do what you want. Um, the one way I found is if you actually uh, get his hands open here, you can just take these and put these into his hands, close his hand up and you can see these are on a hinge you can take these and just bend them down like that and store them underneath the car thusly. So that works as far as storage goes. So hey, it's a thing. It's, it's a thing you can do if you want to store them. And as you can see, the other uh, weaponry doesn't, as I said, doesn't hold on as well as one would like. You can see how some of that stuff just fell off pretty easily. Um, like I said, it, I mean, it holds on well enough. I mean, you can still, you know, roll them around and everything and the stuff won't fall off, but it doesn't, don't, don't, don't take much. Of course, now I'm trying to knock it off and it's staying on. Oh, now you work with me. Now you work with me. You know what? You, you, you. Anyway. But hey, for storage. But anyway, that's pretty much it for the vehicle mode. So let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's, let's just remove all of the weaponry here. Just put all that off to the side. Let's just get this out of his hand. So let's get started. So let me raise up a little bit so I got some room to operate. Yeah, so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to come to the back. We're gonna start transforming the legs first. So just, Split these sections, you can say tab together right here, and there's also a tab that goes in here on either side as well. Just untab all that, and then you can just bring the legs down and free everything up so we have room to work here. Now the legs are really the most complicated part of the transformation here. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to just kind of lift this foot up here. We're gonna come in here, and we're going to take this bit here with the tail lights and just flip that up. You want to come to this section here. You can actually move this out of the way so you can see things better. You can see this tabs in right in here. So you just want to untab this section right there and just swing that out to the side like so. Once you've done that, this whole assembly here just swings around to the back like that, and you can see that's on a hinge. You can just take that and fold that down like that, and leave that like that for now. So now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take, uh, where are we going, where are we going, where are we going? We're going here. <laughs> There's a lot of little steps you have to remember here. So take this panel here, just flip that down. Right here is the heel, and that just tabs in right in there. So just bring that down and that will allow you to take this assembly here and swing that out. And then you're gonna take this wheel here and you're going to swing this out right there. And you can see there's a tab that's just gonna go right in there and tab that in like so. And this whole assembly right here is on a slider. So you just take this and you just slide that down like that. And now this assembly right here is on a double hinge, as you can see, so you just want to straighten that out. First thing you want to do, though, is you want to take this little white piece here and just kind of swing that out of the way. Um, I don't know which side it was. It was actually the other side where I actually cracked the, uh, the hinge here, because the hinge, the hinge on this side is actually very, very tight, and I actually cracked that hinge, like, right there on this side, so... Do be careful with that. Be careful with that hinge there. This side is fine, but this side is the one that cracked on me. But anyway, what you want to do is you just want to take all this and just straighten it out like so. And you can see that there is a tab that will just go right in there. So just tab that in. 
straighten all that out like that. And now you just want to take this section here with the foot, it's on double hinge, just bring that down and that will just tab in right there like so. It's a little white piece, you just want to bring forward like that. And now all this you can bring down like so. And now this whole assembly is just going to swing in and that's just going to tab in right in there. Just swing that in and get that tabbed in like that. Flip that down, these little exhaust pipes, you just want to bring them back as far as they'll go, so that way you don't get in the way of the knee joints. And there you have a leg all done. Second bus, just like the first. So, just bring that up, flip up this bit right here, which is also on a pretty tight hinge. So, once you've done that, then you just untab this section here, like that. And just swing that out, swing that to the back, just bring that down, untab the heel, and now we can just swing that out, swing that out, um, just swing this around like so, and here you can see, you can see right in there, see right there? I don't know if the camera will, come on, there you go, you can see right there, yeah, you can see how that cracked, that's because the hinge on this side was really, really tight, and yeah, that cracked, it hasn't gotten any worse, um, but yeah, definitely something to be careful with if uh, those hinges are a bit too tight, so yeah, like I said, it, it, it hasn't gotten worse, I've transformed them many more times, and it hasn't gotten worse, but still something to be weary of, so be careful with those hinges there, but anywho, once you have that all done, yeah, just slide that down, straighten this out, like so, bring that down, tab that in, tab it in, there we go, and then, oh, make sure you tab this in as well on this side, and just swing all that inward, like so, bring this around, Tab that in, that, bring that down, bring those back, and there you have the legs all done. And now we have this weird looking thing going on. Some kind of weird GUR police car spaceship looking thing. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, this little panel here you just take, you just swing that in, and now we will get started with all of this up here. So the first thing you want to do up here is you want to take these sections here and just swing them out like that, which will allow you to then untab this section right here. You can see it just tabs in right there like that. And you can just bring this up and over like that. And you can untab this section as well. And you can see that just uh, if we move this out of the way, we can bring this panel up so you can see. And you can see there's a tab that just goes right up in there. So you can just bring that up, get that out of the way. And then just swing this out so we can untab that, bring that up and over. And now we can just untab that again, just get all that up and out of the way. This piece right here, you just take and rotate like so, rotate like so. So you got all that done. So now we're going to come up to the front here. And these panels right here, you can see there's this little tab that just goes into that notch in there. So you just want to make sure that you get that out like that. And this section of the front bumper will just come up and over like that. So again, just make sure that clears that little notch there. And just bring that up and over like that. So, and at this point now, you want to take this front part here of the cockpit and just kind of bring this up and just bring that back because you see that tabs up right in there. And that will free up this whole hood section here. So you can now bring the arms out. You can see they don't come out far. They just come out like that. And you just take this whole section here and you just drop that down onto its chest. And this bit right here, you just push back like that. And we're getting there. We're getting there. So, 
want to bring this up. This section right here, you just want to bring up, like so you can see, two tabs are just going right here. And you just want to bring this assembly up. You can see that white tab is just going to plug in right there, like that. And then this section just comes down over, like so. Just going to compress all this up as best you can. We'll just bring that down like that. We got that all done. At this point now, we can rotate him at the waist so everything's facing forward as it should be. Get everything situated here. These panels you do do want you do want to uh, bring down all the way like that. And we are at the home stretch here. So now for the arms, you just want to bring the arm up at this hinge right here, and then you're gonna rock this whole assembly down like that, which is on quite a stiff hinge. So you got that going on like that. And this piece right here is on its own rotational piece. So you just kind of want to push that forward. And again, this is very tight. It's very, it's very, very snug. There you go. You just want to bring that forward like that. And then just collapse that down. Bring that panel down. And this bit just swings up like that. This white piece is also on a hinge. I really don't know what you're supposed to do with that. But you can kind of flare that out if you want to. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I don't really mess with it, but hey, it's a thing you can do if you want to do it. And then you just do the same thing on the other side. Just bring that up and then just rotate that whole assembly down like that. And then just take this and just kind of push that forward like so. And just collapse all this down. Bring that down. Swing that out. Again, do what you want with that. And... I believe we're done. Are we done? Yes, I think we're done. Let me get that into position. I think we're done. I think we're done. Yes, we're done. Woo! We're done! So, there you go. There you have Rebel in his robot mode. And that is definitely a very good representation of IDW Prowl, his early design anyway. And yeah, it looks, it looks quite good. Looks quite quite good so that's getting close not on his chest on his noggin there's the noggin um nicely done head sculpt in my opinion you got some nice metallic red paint there for the head crest nice blue for the eyes it is a nicely done head sculpt in my opinion i think that looks really good looks really good um now when you get this toy there are little stickers on here with arrows pointing up, and I'm assuming they're pointing up at these little bits right here. I guess that's their way of saying, be careful with these. I haven't had any problem with them. But uh, yeah, there are little, basically little warning stickers on here about these pieces. But yeah, so far, I've, I've had no problem with them whatsoever. But still, something to note. But although, um, very nice design. With the nice red and blue there. I do have a little bit of uh, sloppy red paint on this forearm, as you can see. <laughs> but it's okay. Not the end of the world. But the paintwork on this figure is pretty, pretty nice. Let's see right there, the nice reds and blues. Nice and vibrant. Looks quite good. Looks quite, quite good. And the back. You can see he does have a bit of a backpack, you know, the top of the car backpack going on there. But not too shabby. Not too shabby in my opinion. Now articulation wise, the head is on a ball joint. So you do have some nice wiggly waggly movement there. He can look at big squirrel. You're under arrest, squirrel. Yeah, I can do that. He can look down a bit. And you have full 360 degree range of rotation there. The arms can do a full 360. Again, that hinge is pretty tight, but you can do a full 360. You can go in and out. You do have bicep rotation. You do have a double jointed elbow there. So you have a nice range of movements there as well. Uh, you do have wrist rotation. The hands do open and close. These bits rotate if you need them to. Uh, he does have waist rotation. He also does have an ab crunch. You can actually pull his chest up. It's actually a double jointed ab crunch. You can just pull that and now you have a nice deep ab crunch going on there, which is pretty cool. And then you just push that back down. That's cool how that works. Uh, these pieces right here do angle up. 
to uh, accommodate the leg movement. So you can move the legs forward, that far, back, that far. You can kind of push the backpack out of the way a little bit. Outward. You can move these panels out of the way. Outward. You can almost do the full splits. You do have thigh rotation. You have 90 degrees of bends there at the knee. And the feet here are on a ball joint. They can move up. They can move all the way down. You do get tilted right there. And if you untab the, the wheel here, and you can also use the, uh, the wheel here to get some heel tiltage as well. So you can have those kind of working in tandem with each other if you need them to. So, all in all, he is pretty, pretty poseable. And of course, you can give him his weaponry. You can give him the shoulder launchers. And all you do here is these tabs are just going to plug into these slots right here in his back. And they just plug on like so. And again, they don't plug on super securely, they are pretty loose. I mean, they hold on, again, they hold on well enough. Like, they're not going to just fall out. That's fine. But as you're, but if you want to, you know, uh, adjust them, you're probably going to end up pulling them right off. So uh, I would definitely advise that when you are posing the shoulder launchers that you actually, you know, hold on to them and then position it how you want. That way you don't just, you know, knock them off. So you have that. And, of course, you can give him his, uh, his beating sticks if you want. Just open up his hands. You can hold those, like so. You can say, stop in the name of the law, whack, 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 you know. <laughs> That's pretty much the way Prowl works. <laughs> or you can give him his guns, and you just use the uh, tab right here, and just tabs into the base of his palm in there. And the guns, he does hold very, very securely. those so you can have them all nice and armed up now as far as storage for the weapons in robot mode um i i don't know i don't know what to do with these it seems like you should be able to store these because they have these ports here but i haven't seen anywhere to actually put these i don't know i don't maybe you can just you know i don't know do that i guess i don't i don't know I guess, if you really had to, you could do that. Other than that, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> as far as the guns go, um, you do actually still have the vehicle mode storage uh, available to you. They're just on the legs now, so if you wanted to, you could just take the guns and just, you know, plug them there if you want for storage. It doesn't look great, but hey, you know, it's storage if you need it. But, yeah. So, there you go. So, they have that. And now, for comparison, here he is with Generation Toys version of IDW Optimus Prime. So, you can see how they look together. Here he is with G Creations take on IDW Prime. Make me transform that thing again. As you can see, oh, they look with one another. Here he is with Mastermind Creations, IDW Rodimus. So you got that. And here he is with the SXS, IDW Rodimus. So you can see how they scale with one another. Here he is with Leader Class Ultra Magnus since he is very IDW styled. So you can see how he scales there with Leader Magnus. And here he is with Masterpiece Prowl. So you can see he is basically Masterpiece scale there. So, there you have that. So there you have a G Creations Rebel, AKA IDW Prowl. Um, uh, for the most part, it is a nicely done figure. Again, be careful with that double hinge in the leg there. Um, that, that could just be a case of your mileage may vary. It could just very well be my copy. I don't know, but still something to note, something to be wary of. Um, 
The, the weapon connections, as far as storage goes, could be a little bit better, could be a little bit tighter. Um, the light transformation can be a bit fiddly, but once you know how things are supposed to move, where things are supposed to go, and how to get them there, um, it, it's not so bad. But all in all, though, he is a decently done figure. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention here, as far as the articulation goes, the, the shoulders can move forward and back a bit. But, um... Yeah, but all in all, though, he is a pretty nicely done figure. Um, I will say, I, I do think that G-Creation has stepped up their game as far as the quality of their figures go. Um, this figure definitely does feel a lot more solid than uh, than Ultra Maximus felt. I mean, you know, I, I haven't had a single thing break on Ultra Maximus, but um, he does still feel like he, he feels kind of fragile, like he just feels like not as solid. This guy definitely does feel solid, so I, I do feel like they are stepping up their game a bit. I still think they have a bit of a ways to go if they really want to be up there with some of the other third party, you know, with some of the top third party companies, I still think they have a way to go. But, um... I, I think this figure, uh, this this figure definitely feels like a step in the right direction. So there you go. So if you would like this or any of G Creations' other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so you can check that out. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also linked in the description down below, so you can check that out as well. And I think that's it, so don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the G Creation Rebel, and this is MGo saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud, boom in your face! <laughs> Look, Prowl, I already told you, this plan of yours is not happening, and that's final! <laughs> Stupid Magnus thinks he can tell me what to do! I am so angry! I don't have a table to flip! So, so I told the Quintesson, I said, That's no Petra Rabbit, that's my- no! <laughs> eh. Good enough.